for making it on the show. Now, there are names that are being bandied about right now, being floated as to who may be the interim prime minister. This is, of course, after uh, Mohammed el Baradai was rejected a little earlier uh, today. But whoever takes on Egypt's leadership really is not just taking on a massive political social divide. It's also taking on a failing economy. It's also taking poor and lax security. What characteristics do you think is needed in this leader to try to bridge these problems? Well, as you just said, it's a very uh, tense and worrying situation on the streets of Egypt now. And, and whoever, the, whoever the, uh, the leader is, is going to be very brave to take on such a situation. I mean, when you think that the army uh, stepped in on Wednesday in response to the sort of unprecedented demonstration of people on the streets, anti-Morsi protesters on the streets, um, the army stepped in saying that it wanted to avoid a situation, a descent into chaos. But now we have uh, the day after up to 30 people have been killed, over 1,400 have been injured, and uh, both pro and anti Morsi protesters on the street in huge numbers, both sides saying that they are not going to step down. Rachel, so it does seem like an impossible political stalemate, doesn't it? I mean, given the massive political and social divide in Egypt, is this a country that will find itself in a never ending revolution? Well, that is exactly the worry that how exactly is Egypt going to step down from this situation that seems to have developed into a kind of zero-sum game for both sides. And of course, one of the, uh, one of the difficulties of this situation is that the uh, anti-Morsi demonstra demonstrators say that they're on the streets in part because Morsi's presidency was so majoritarian in its approach. But now they seem to be playing the same line in that they seem to be focusing on majority and numbers as well. Whereas what the situation really needs is a massive attempt to bring about a unity and consensus and a situation that is palatable and inclusive to all sides. Rachel. Al Noor party seems to be the current kingmaker right now in Egypt. What is your opinion? Do you think they're acting on the in, in the interests of the nation or is it their own interests? It's really hard to see anybody acting in the interests of the nation right now. Everybody seems to be very much interested in their own little invested uh, interests. Uh, Al Noor party, if you remember, was uh, not so long ago allied to the Muslim Brotherhood. They were on the same side when it came to pushing through Morsi's very rushed and very unpopular constitution not long ago. Now they seem to have completely deserted him and have moved onto the side of the anti-Morsi uh, opposition. It's very hard to see what they are playing in this game. And it's also very hard to see how the opposition is going to resolve the dispute that has evolved between the Al-Nur party and other members of the opposition. It's also a very dangerous political game that, that they're playing. Now, Rachel, in a recent article, you wrote, like it or not, the Muslim Brotherhood is a sizable part of the political landscape and has to be a part of Egypt's political future. Given what's just happened to them, do you think they've learned their lesson? The trouble is that um, if, if there had not been a military uh, takeover that forced President Morsi to leave, perhaps the Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood would have would have taken a step back and said, OK, what, do we, what did we do wrong? What do we need to learn from this situation? And that may still happen. But on the other hand, what they're likely to feel now is that they've been backed into a corner. And the message that they're likely to hear is, well, as it turns out, when we try to do democracy, we're forcibly removed. Having said that, the party has survived for a very long time, decades, uh, in opposition. It's been persecuted, it's been driven underground, its members have been imprisoned and tortured, and it has always found a way to survive and keep going. So perhaps organisationally, it does have what it takes uh, to learn the lessons and to remain the part of, uh, of Egyptian politics that, that an organisation of its size it would seem would still need to be.
Rachel, always good talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Rachel Shabi there, Middle East author and journalist.